<laughs> Hello, good morning, everybody, and welcome to a new guest slot here on Wild Wisdom Wellbeing. And so I'm Robin, Robin Harris of Equenergy Wellbeing Naturally, and this is my group. And today I am absolutely delighted. I have two wonderful, wonderful guests with me. I have Claire Devonshire and Helen Grundy from Chelanair. And they've Hello. sent me a little bit Good morning. of Good morning. They've sent me a little bit of information to help me to share a little bit about what they do. So uh, they work together to help leaders and light workers and change makers, so important at this time, to clear blocked mindset energies and to adjust and maintain their clients frequencies and vibrations as you know i'm passionate about energy and how we can support our energy and work with that for well-being and for stepping into our soul selves so that we can be our fullest potential which is why helen and claire resonated with me so deeply uh, and obviously being energy sensitives and sensitives themselves that is the line of work that they do also so they do uh, home clearings work clearings buildings businesses places that maybe have some negative energy claire and helen help to shift that um so the things that can help us that can cause us to get stuck in our lives and they offer coaching mentoring one-to-one -one or in groups um and home and business visits um and they run transformational retreats doesn't that just sound gorgeous right now when we've all been stuck at home transformational retreats sounds beautiful and guess where they're happening in kefalonia yeah that just is beyond imagining at the moment so if you two lovely ladies would just tell us a little bit about who is claire who is helen and how did you come together to set up chelanair Certainly. Um, so I've, I've been sensitive all my life, um, as Helen has been as well. But it took me quite a while to realise that me being labelled as a really oversensitive child and that it was a bad thing was actually yeah. because I was very sensitive to energies. So anyone watching who can uh, sympathise with that go, oh, yeah, got that T-shirt, um, mm -hmm. know how it feels. And, and luckily, luckily, um, I was able to meet Helen just a few years ago. So Helen was running Equilibrium Natural Health Centre in Corsham. And I walked in one day, felt very drawn to work there. And and it was funny, wasn't it, Helen? Because you had been talking with a member of staff saying, we could do with somebody to run law of attraction classes. Mm -hmm. And I came in in the afternoon saying, I'm looking for a room. What do you do? I said, oh, I run law of attraction classes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then Helen and I, we just hit it off. We knew there was a soul connection. We knew we recognised each other, which is lovely, good fun. And we did our first workshop. And honestly, Robin, it was so beautiful. It was so synchronistic. Everything flowed between us. We were very, very comfortable with each other. And, and the lovely feedback from our, our beautiful, kind clients was that we offered a sort of yin and yang energy and you could probably tell I'm the yang energy. <laughs> Helen's a nice yin, gentle, <laughs> gentle but strong. She's beautiful. Um, and then uh, so we started working together. And then just um, probably about two and a half years ago, we decided to come up with a business name. And we used so Chelanair is an anagram of our two names. And it's our, our combined energy. We found when our energy combines it does amazing, amazing things for our clients. And that's incredibly humbling. So, yeah. And it's interesting when you talk about the name and how that name came together. I was listening to somebody doing their live the other day talking about the importance of names. And there is the whole um, science of names and the energy that names can hold and how people maybe in some cultures they have more than one name they have a secret name and they have the name that they tell everybody and how that secret name holds their essence and i think even just to listen to that name chelanair there's something oh, thank you something beautiful about the energy of that name oh thank, thank you robin you, yeah actually talking of names one of the things we do on our retreats is we get all of our people to sit in a circle and we all 
chant their name at them and it has an such an impact that people often cry because it's like we are calling them calling yes. them up calling them forth and there's something about the that essence isn't there whether it's doing people say about doing affirmations and or i have now come to call them power truths but looking mm -hmm. in a mirror looking yourself in the eye when you say these yes. things and if you i've done uh, workshops where you get a partner and you look in their eyes just look mm -hmm. directly into their eyes and it that too causes people to cry because it's like being seen at your mm -hmm. deepest center where you're not wearing any of the masks and things that we often just come to wear day to day but it's like they're all stripped away and you're seen and accepted and loved and mm -hmm. all of that just for who you are exactly. you do you yeah. see they say the soul is reflects in the eyes obviously it's yeah. true yeah. you look in someone's yeah. eyes you can often see what their emotions are yeah their true, can. true core soul nature it's just beautiful yeah. and have you ever done it as well where you've looked into someone's eyes and then you start seeing their past lives on their faces as well mm -hmm. if you right. look long enough yeah yeah that's quite entertaining I've quite often when I'm doing Reiki with somebody, I will see their best self themselves oh, yes. at their very best. So the glow, glowing, shining aspect of themselves. But also when I work with animals, I do a little bit of animal communication and I'll use a photograph looking into the eyes of the animal. And the first time I ever did that, I was on a workshop. I was learning with a wonderful friend of mine. Uh, who's actually been a guest on here and she um, she had a, this beautiful beautiful horse this wonderful equine soul and she gave me his photograph we were all swapping photographs that we we're working with other people's animals and I just looked at it and burst into tears I'm like where did that come from but it was because I felt that I had been seen to that deepest deepest level Mm, yeah, beautiful. it was very, very, very moving. I've, I've got coming through, Robin, that you actually had a lifetime together that was quite profound. Mm. And that's why there was that heart trigger going on within you. Yeah, that it did. It, that's, that's how it felt. It felt like and I believe that we are all connected on the soul level. So it's like you see that connection as well. You see it is that recognition. It's the I know you, I am known by you. And I love that also another native thing, and it, they were using it in the Avatar movie where cultures, their word for hello, as we would translate it for hello, is I see you. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So things like you. namaste. <laughs> yes, it does yeah. that, doesn't it? It's yeah. that kind of namaste, aloha, I see you. And yeah. it just, it, oh, it makes my stomach go all fluttery. I know, I've and, just gone all resonant through my body. <laughs> you just saying it like that, it's powerful. Yeah. I just actually like to take this moment to say welcome. We've got a couple of, unfortunately, it's coming up as Facebook users. I can't see names, but we've got a couple of people who have joined us and said good morning. So lovely to have you oh, both good here. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> to go back, Claire, you were saying about being labelled as an oversensitive child. And oh. I think that's probably something that's quite common for people in this group and people who maybe would follow uh, my posts and things because that's the people that I connect with. And I was wondering if you, having been through that and having realized this is not a bad thing, this is a gift, it's, it's a challenging gift, but it is a gift. Have you got maybe something that yourself or Helen could say to people who have been given that label and who have maybe struggled with that? Yeah, yeah. One of the strongest things I discovered, um, because we both come from a background where, you know, we would feel people's emotional pain in our own body. And, and if anyone's got that for themselves or we'd go, I mean, I remember going to a funeral and then being ill for two days afterwards, not realizing that I'd soaked up everyone's grief and then I'm having to process it totally yeah. oblivious to what it is because my whole family, the rest of them, totally not sensitive in energies. But I was very fortunate to be guided to, as I see it now, I was guided to a very experienced group of ladies 
And I learned very quickly that we can just put on a bubble of protection. And I love the analogy of seeing it like a clear bubble. Because if we are sensitive to energies, we're actually here to shine our light because we are divine beings having a human experience. And then if you are then able to just have this really strong protective bubble that only allows, like osmosis, if it only allows love in, but you shine that divine power of love out. And, and I do remember the first time, it's very easy to think, well, why would I need a bubble? Why would I? And then I just had the, I love using this humorous explanation from my clients who go, yes, but that's just how it is. You know, I'm just sensitive. I just have to stay at home and not, not go out anywhere. And so we, we play on the idea that, well, if we were to go out in the middle of winter in a t-shirt and shorts, we'd be going, <laughs> it's so cold. It's so cold. <laughs> And uh, I'll have to stay indoors in the heat. Um, and then we just play with the idea, well, well, actually, you can put a coat on. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and actually, that's really nice. <laughs> we don't have to. We're not born with a coat, but it is useful. And it's the same. It's so important for empaths and sensitives that we learn that this is our, this is our light. This is why we're on the planet, to shine this love. And we can do this beautiful bubble. And if you're in, if you know you're going somewhere where you think, oh, I know, I know the energies there are not great. I remember that. We can turn up the dial switch and go, Zzz. use your humor, your imagination. You know, I had one client who couldn't actually cope living on the planet. He's such a star being that he created a shell out of almost um, intergalactic silver material. That was the only way he could cope. Now the planet's on a higher resonance. He's like, I'm here. The world is a match for my energy now. Is he wearing a tinfoil so, hat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with a little aerial on the top. Yeah, <laughs> that is a joke. <laughs> yeah, okay. What about you, Helen? What, what did you find? Well, as a child, I was very sensitive. Um, it wasn't seen in me, but I, I kind of knew it. And I watched my father after my mother left when I was five years old. And my father brought us up, my brother and I. And I was the youngest. And I knew that there was pain in the house. I felt it. I felt my own pain as well, of course. But I watched my father. I just looked at his face and I knew that he needed to talk to somebody. He needed... <laughs> it's interesting So I was only five at the time and I knew that he needed help. Um, but I tried to help him, but I couldn't. But I would pray. I would talk to Jesus. And I wasn't brought up to be religious. I just read about Jesus and thought, I love you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, source energy, if you like, as well. Angels, I would talk and ask for help, ask for guidance. Um, and I knew that I was sensitive. I don't think I was aware that I needed to protect myself. But I did grow, go through some interesting experiences of feeling other people's pain I remember when I was older um talking to a friend whose husband had been cheating on her and she was shaking she was in shock and trauma she was getting stomach cramps and I really felt for her and I wanted to take her pain away and on my way home I was feeling all of the pains my stomach was cramping I was shaking and I was thinking, oh my God, what's going on? Um, can you take this away from me? And it did, obviously. But then I realized that I was quite an empath. And I went into, through my own ill health, went into training as a therapist, homeopath, life coach. Um, and I'm very sensitive to energies like Claire, Reiki. And we use all of our tools now in what we do now is definitely my true path I love our work and being sensitive is a huge bonus it's a tool you know we can use things we can read situations with it we can read people if they allow us to of course <laughs> and uh, it's yeah really useful tool yeah. in our work in energies in homes you know we we tune in before we go it's always right when we get there, everything yeah. that we pick up before we go. Yeah. And that was an interesting experiment for us because we weren't sure that we were always picking up, you know, was it going to work? But every single home that we've done and business, mm. 
we've recorded what we picked up before we went and when we've gone there it's like yep <laughs> so if you are sensitive then you know use it it's wonderful it's a great gift but yes as claire said protect yourself look after yourself don't yeah, go into so bad situations if you're not feeling strong yeah so important on so many levels and to stay grounded as well because yes. you can so easily be swept away can't you if, if you don't have a strong grounding and a strong root yeah. and i always I, think it's also worth looking at the language we describe ourselves as so so you know so rather than seeing yourself as oversensitive which which makes it feel like it's a weakness like you're vulnerable mm. it's mm. actually you have additional senses you know you have magnified senses but it's also remembering and i'll, I'll say it again just to emphasize is about we are the divine light and the strongest energy in existence is that divine unconditional love and when we accept ourselves that we are all of us this shining light we're not all the beliefs that we bought into we're not all of the traumas that have got stuck on the outside we are that core essence and as soon as we start shining that out if we believe that 100 we would never need any form of protection bubble anything because everything would just sizzle on the outside and shine with love but we are having human experiences we are interacting in the human world so it is nice like we say in winter put your coat on <laughs> but it yeah. is it just use words that describe your power as a beautiful asset to your life and if you need to use it, your imagination visualization your words to just and humor humor is so important mm -hmm. so if you know you've got to go like you want to go to a funeral right because you want to pay your respects you want to be there for your family but you don't want to come back and just feel like you've just picked up everyone's senses and everything in the churchyard and everything in the church no, just go, right, I'm going to do a maximum, um, you know, use some Star Trek things, put your force field up, <laughs> you know, wh wherever floats your boat, whether it's fairies, a lightness, something that resonates with you, just turn it up and just know that you've got angelic protection, you've got your own protection, you've got star protection, you've got divine love shining out. So you are now being of benefit to others. That's when you help, not taking their pain away and then trying to have to process it yourself. You're emanating to them saying, I love you and I understand that you are a beautiful being and whatever you are experiencing, you are loved, you are amazing and you will come through this. And that's a totally different vibration that you're sending out rather than go, oh, poor you, I need to help you because that's what uh, the undertone of empaths is our nature to want to do until we realize and to, until we realize that everybody is energy everything is energy and yeah. we can all vibrate at that higher frequency of love yeah and on all of those high higher vibrations we can start moving up that vibrational scale and yeah. that's once it's like that tuning fork isn't it you strike the tuning fork you put it on a surface and it vibrates with that resonance and then everything else it touches does as well and it doesn't even need to touch because the vibrations are obviously traveling through the air but we as we were just saying are all connected so if i can vibrate with that vibration and i can hold that vibration then everything around me has to come into that vibration as well or leave exactly you've got it in one robin it's a beautiful yeah, yeah. description yes and just Fabulous. to say uh, it was jenny jenny luddington who has joined us she's been able to adjust the settings or whatever and her name is now coming up so it's Hi, lovely jenny. to see you with us, jenny <laughs> thank you for coming along and joining us uh so for those who are experiencing these sensitivities and i completely agree that we need to change the label it's our wording that shows our thoughts that that determines our beliefs that therefore determines our experience and how we experience what we are what's happening in our lives so is it oh no this is terrible what's wrong with me or is it wow i have this precious gift how can i learn to 
grow into it more fully? How can I learn to express it more fully, use it to support myself and to support those around me? So what maybe would you have to say for people who are experiencing that level of sensitivity and all those wonderful, but sometimes overwhelming or scary intuitive nudges that maybe they're only just coming into a realization that's what this actually is. What do I do? How do I learn about this? How do I deal with these feelings? Well, the first thing is, first thing I have to say is that Claire and I always say, acknowledge anything that gets in your way, acknowledge any pain that you might be holding on to, acknowledge anything that is a negative belief about yourself. Because if you don't acknowledge it and you just push it away and ignore it, it's going to keep coming back. Yeah. And if you are sensitive and you're telling yourself, this is silly and I can't do this, I can't do that, we need to look at that first because you can. So, and and whose that... voice is that? Because it's not your inner yeah. voice. It's a voice that you have heard and taken on board, internalised from yeah. somewhere yeah. else. It may have been from and a therefore teacher, you can let it go. Yeah, it may have been from parents, friends, any. Sometimes we take things on, don't we, and believe that about ourselves. So, yeah, definitely look at that, acknowledge, and maybe join a group, a meditation group, psychic mm. development group, because that's where you can practice with another group of like-minded, supportive people to help you to really connect in with that. Because it's quite hard at times to do it on your own. You can read books mm. about it and, you know, do your best to develop. But it's better, I would say, always better in a group or with another person so you can practice. And we do this regularly. Yeah. We're still always evolving. You know, we're mm. always doing more work on ourselves, developing more. Um, we're starting, Claire and I are starting to work more on visuals. We're seeing more visual energy experiences which is wonderful we've asked mm. and we've had you know we've seen visuals in the past but we want to have more uh, so we have asked to see more and we're starting it's really exciting we're starting to see a lot more now i completely agree with what you were saying about not to just push it away and i'm the same about positive thinking i think sometimes we think we should be positive but we're doing it just as a cover up, as a sticking plaster. Yeah. So it's so yeah. important to acknowledge, well, what am I really feeling deep down? Where, where is that coming from? How can I address that and process it and clear it? And then I can start without baggage to move yeah. forward mm. and to yeah, grow. Yeah, Claire and I and, are both great followers of Esther Hicks. Oh, and, yes. <laughs> and, you know, I need more money. I need more money. Well, that's a need. Yeah. yeah, what are you focusing More on? The need, need the lack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's about having the right right vibration to attract what you want as if you've already got it. But if you're coming mm -hmm. from a pain point or a feeling of dis ease, mm -hmm. then you're not going to be attracting what you actually want. Mm -hmm. So that's another Which reason is a... we have to look at what's blocking what is that mm -hmm. emotion. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's not about wallowing in it. It's not about having to dive into that pain, but it's about, about it's respecting our own body and our consciousness that our outer self is lovingly showing us what yes. we're ready to clear. And again, that's the perspective of it. It's a different perspective. And it's just well, thank you, body you know, ailment, yes. ache, pain, whatever it might yeah. be. Thank you, yeah. my beautiful body. Thank you for showing me that there's something within my system, my energy field, whether it's a belief, a thought, or even a trace ancestry thing or an intergalactic thing that you've come in with, whatever it might be. But I am obviously ready to clear that now in an easy and light way, in the right and perfect way for me, with the right and perfect mentor. So, you know, you will be drawn to somebody, people will be drawn to you, people will be drawn to us, people drawn to other people. The right and perfect way to clear that easily, then to be allowing your true light to shine through and be that full resonance of who you are. And it's and it's wonderful. It doesn't have to be a painful process that you're forever picking at it and picking at it, because actually 
we have the full capability to just go, Ta-da! I am my divine light and everything just melts away. But we're not quite there just yet. Mm-hmm. right? We're still choosing to have our human experience. We're not quite in the fifth dimension yet. But let's have fun with it along the way. Let's be gentle on ourselves when stuff comes up. Thank you. Thank you. What would I like to do about this? Sometimes if it's so painful with our mentoring, we make a love shelf and say, look, I cut. That's too big. That's too big for me. That's like Mount Everest. I'm not ready to do that one yet. Let's put on the love shelf and let unconditional divine love just work at that while I build up my inner strength and inner acknowledgement and faith and belief in myself, then when I am ready, that will either have shrunk or I am more than ready to look at that now. And that will be easy for me to just go, oh, now I understand it. There's lots of things that we can do. And we could be here all week sharing all of them, but we'll (laughs) just try and do a little few tips and ideas. Definitely. And you've brought up a couple of things there that I really, really love and and believe in very strongly. The trust, trust in yourself. So trust in those little nudges that this is the right person to work with. This is the right group for me to join. But equally, that one doesn't feel quite with quite right for me so listen to those little nudges and follow them I think and and the more we do that the more we trust the more we practice listening the more we act on that the more the little inner voice of the John yes you're listening I've got all of this more to tell you and we'll be sort of being able to discern and understand our inner language what is my body Mm -hmm. saying what is that vocabulary that's unique to me because it's my body. How can I listen to that? How can I interpret it? How can I respond and follow and and grow therefore? But also you mentioned humor. I love humor. And to keep that lightness, to keep that just, I can laugh with myself. I'm not laughing at myself. I am laughing with myself and I am enjoying. And I can't remember where I picked that up. I think it was Neil Donald Walsh who talks about N joy means bring joy into so i am enjoying my life it is my choice how i experience this human experience that i'm in i can choose to do it with joy even when things are challenging i can go you know oh that's interesting be curious be open and then just laugh with myself i trip or slip or oops there i go again and and also just to say as well gratitude Oh, I think I those are the biggest it. things, aren't yeah. they? Trust, jo- um, humour and gratitude. Mm, if we yeah. could all just allow those to fill our lives. Mm. That changes your energy straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, It does, doesn't mm-hmm. it? And even just, you know, if you sit, if you say that word or any, you know, any one of those words and just sit in that feeling, it lifts you, doesn't it? And, and you feel... Mm. Actually, maybe today's not so bad. Actually, maybe today I have got more resources than I thought I had. Mm, yeah. I love that. I love the enjoy. And I think maybe we need to create a new word, which is enjoy. <laughs> yes. I'm going to enjoy it with an I-N because it's now in yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I love the way we can play with language and yes. really feel into the vibration of of the words that we use, whether we are finding them uplifting and supportive and expansive and this excites me and I feel like I can grow or equally some words can just shut us down, can't they? Absolutely. Do you think sometimes, Robin, as well, that we need to have more words, especially as we start (laughs) to get in the higher dimensions? I know I know sometimes when I'm channeling, um, even even with the divine eminence, they're going the words don't exist to describe a multidimensional um, vibration or message. So we're finding the closest word that's the best match, but it's still not the right thing. So we all need to have a new vocabulary for the fifth dimension. So if anyone's out there who's really good with words, let's, let's do a fifth dimensional um, dictionary. I'd love that. <laughs> and we only have vocabulary for the things that we've experienced and experienced yes. often enough for it to be worth creating. You know, new technology is the same. Until we had 
all the various different things that we have around computers, for example, we didn't have the words for them. We had to create them as the thing was created yeah. or as the thing came into our experience. And so that's one side, but also I think language words, they're just never gonna be quite adequate, aren't they? are they? Because it's feelings. Yeah, it's it's so much deeper. And maybe, you know, in some further dimension, we will have ways, but whether that will be vocabulary, lexical elements that describe it, or whether it will just be that, you know, you put your hand on somebody and just convey it. Just this Absolutely. is what I'm trying to say, or not even putting your hand, you know, I'm going to do it through touch, it, but I'm yeah. going to do it just just yeah, just vibrationally. So maybe we need to start using music or other forms of vibration to help as well as we do when, you know, meditations often are accompanied by music. But I'd also oh, just like to happy. say hello to Andrea, who has joined us, saying Hi, that she Andrea. loves the idea, loving the idea of the love shelf to hold issues until you're ready. Yes, that's a very, very beautiful one. And I loved as well, you said that either it will have shrunk or the vision then that came to my mind was I have stepped into my bigger me and what was once the mountain is now the molehill. Exactly. It's so much our perspective, isn't it? On how, yes. you know, sometimes we're too close to things. They look huge. And they're, when we can take a step back, we go, oh, actually, it's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have tools that I've already been working on, been developing, which can cover this, this and this. And it's only a small step to do the, the further work and I can grow. I get that opportunity. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling inclined to share something personal with you. Um, when my son was 12, I allowed him to move to Australia to live with his dad and it absolutely destroyed me. I thought I would be stronger thinking I am just a spiritual being, but I forgot that I'm a human mother. <laughs> And the yeah. heartache and pain that I experienced, I I dipped even with all my knowledge and awareness, everything and law of attraction made sure everything else fell apart at the same time as well. <laughs> I had a yeah. really, really low time. And at that time, there was no way, there was no way that I could deal with my grief and sort it out. It was just too intense that if I even thought about it, I would just go further down. And and eventually, that's the only thing that I thought. I mean, I did reach rock bottom and I nearly opted out. Um, but it was just knowing that I had this divine eminence, or, or as I called them, the team then, it was a smaller team, that they just loved me. They lovingly reminded me of what it would do to my son if I did choose to opt out of the planet. And I thought, OK, that's my bottom. I cannot go any lower than that so where am I going and and for people to say you know look for the light at the end of the tunnel I couldn't even see the tunnel let alone the light at the yeah. end of the tunnel yeah. so for me I couldn't face dealing with that so that they lovingly held that in their energy while I just picked myself up a day at a time and dusted bits of me off until I did have the strength and it's not all gone you know, and I don't think it will be gone until my son has children and and we go through a clearing process together. But mm -hmm. I've become stronger and stronger and stronger so that now it's my light that's making a difference. I can understand what people experience when they go through grief. And now I'm able to see that as a higher overview. I'm not stuck in the woods and blocked by the trees of grief. I now have that overview and a higher understanding. I also saw the multidimensional reason why we both chose that on a soul level as well. And that's helped soothe that mountainous <laughs> thing. But, you know, it's still there, it's still a bit of a, a bit of a hill. But I am, like you said, I've become this greater person from it. So, and yeah. like you say, we are still human. Yes. You know, we're we're there. We have those two aspects, and they're constantly having to adjust and recalibrate. And how am I being here in this human experience as yeah. a divine light and as the soul self of who I am? 
but how then am I dealing with the day to day? And sometimes it really is all we can do just to keep breathing, just to keep putting one foot in front of another, maybe not even that, maybe just to sit and be in that space and just trust that something, things will always change. Yes. Yeah. One of the things, one of the constants in life is change. Mm -hmm. So just to sit and breathe and trust that tomorrow will be different. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it doesn't feel all that different, it will be different. And over time, all those little bits of difference will add up to. Yeah. It's like your behave. default level comes from very low down. Mm. So as you as you allow your energy and vibration and light to shine stronger and stronger, your default level comes up and we still yeah. have that incredible wave of life because we are all meant to, we're not going to just flatline and have a boring existence. We want that flow. It doesn't have to be peaks and troughs. Like, ah! <laughs> but it's also at a lovely higher default level. That's your vibrational level. And I think once you reach that, do you find that as well, Helen? Once you reach that sort of default, you don't go right the way down anymore. Your default level never drops right the way down because you've got that inner resilience. I also think that we actually grow and learn through challenges. And that, you know, oh, definitely. It's not a problem, <laughs> it's a challenge. And the challenges help us really grow and change. Mm. And it's not until you've experienced pain which we both have had in our lives, that you can become more empathic to others and understanding. You know, there's, Cahill Gibran said, pain is the breaking of your shell of understanding. I love that quote. That's because beautiful. It's absolutely true, isn't it? It's he wrote some people, beautiful stuff. Yeah, mm. definitely. But there are people that carry on giving out the pain, obviously, that don't change. <laughs> and that may be their role as well on Earth, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. When we can get that understanding that pain, pain is going to come. That we are humans, we feel, yeah. but we don't have to suffer with the pain. Mm -hmm. And if we can trust that it's, it is a challenge. It is part of our growth, and that we can choose to use it for that. Mm -hmm. We can choose to see it as, as an opportunity and a potential. And I love the um, Chinese character for crisis is danger with opportunity. It's the two things together. Oh, so fabulous. many times in our lives, I think the challenges are, oh my goodness, what a what an issue, what a problem in one sense. And again, our vocabulary is very important as to how we label things. Yes. But even if it is a problem, it is an a problem with an opportunity. Mm. So when we can see that and go, okay, I don't like this problem. Where on earth can I find the opportunity within it? Or where? how can I even just trust that it's there and it will reveal itself when Also, I'm in ready? our experiences in clearing energies in homes and businesses, we found that emotions that have been repetitively <laughs> happening in a particular room or in an office hang around. Mm. So then mm. that can affect the next person coming in. So we had one particular home we did where there was a lot of anger in one of the rooms and we felt it, but we felt all this grief and sadness as well. And it turned out that the ex-husband was very angry and that was his office. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, it's still, we had to clear it. And because it's all subconscious as well. So it's... Um... You know, the family didn't know why they didn't want to go to that part of the house. They just yeah. instinctively kept away from it and used another part of the house. And of course, we tuned in before and thought, goodness me, what is that oozing out? Mm -hmm. And then when we went into it, like, oh, right. And then we went in, shared, saying, look, this is what we've picked up. This is the emotions. That... And, and we always get this phrase from our clients because we say, don't tell us anything. We'll tell you what we picked up. We express it and then they all say, funny you should say that. And then they <laughs> yeah. and then they explain what's gone on in that space. And we're like, ah. And then we clear it. And then the family own that space and they they then work in that space, play and be in that space. It, it's very, very fascinating, absolutely fascinating. 
Mm, definitely. And even though people sometimes aren't quite as sensitive, they will still have a, a subconscious awareness. Absolutely. We can just yeah. go into any room and, oh, there's been an argument in here or I can feel an atmosphere. And definitely in office, for example, an office space, you can just get a sense of the morale and how mm. that will, if it starts to go up and, and it'll build, it'll spiral upwards. But the same is true the other way, that if it starts to go down, people get lower and it's just, it, it builds either way, doesn't it? It builds the feeling of heaviness or it builds that feeling of lightness. Well, one of the things we do is we get the person to set their intentions, mm. to set their intentions for their business or for their household, their family. And again, so it's putting out the positive that they want to attract. Mm. And that's very powerful as well. We've done follow ups with businesses and people and it's all had a massive effect, which is wonderful for us. Mm. You know, we love this work. We see we see because we're clear what's what's no longer a match. Anything that's been stagnant holding them back, even like we did a place of work where the previous occupants they'd actually gone bust. They they had gone into bankruptcy. And luckily, the new business going in, they had the, the presence of mind to say, I don't want to start my business in that energy. And it was a good job because, it, oh, my God, it was so powerful. And we could, both of us said, the owner used to sit in that corner and and the new the new business owner goes uh, actually yes he did yeah, <laughs> so heavy. so we clear all that and then and then when when we leave them with their powerful resonance they're radiating out their new intention we go back a few months later and you can see their lives just and not only what we love for that example as well is is our client that her business has taken off but also the life of the previous owner. Yeah. Um, because we did a blessing. You know, we yeah. thought, gosh, he's been carrying that all that pain. He's and we were still yeah, it, yeah, and we we can't go into details because of confidentiality, but we did a blessing and it did a, a sort of suggestion and an offering of a possibility of him traveling with his wife and loving his life. And sure enough, we met our client. And we asked how the ex-owner was. And, uh, said, oh, yeah, funny enough, he's gone off traveling with his wife. <laughs> we're just like, oh, funny that. <laughs> we love it. Absolutely love it. But you intentions know, are fun. wonderful. And they, and they really mm. do hold that vibration. And like you were saying, if you have that vibration, then that just attracts more of that vibration to itself. Yeah. And you just reminded me of the whole Ho'oponopono. I was sharing that. Uh, on my page, my Equenergy Wellbeing Naturally page this week as part of the Valentine's Kutch that I'm doing. And just that, it, it is that blessing really, isn't it? And it is that intention and sending out that positive vibration to another, because again, we are all connected, even if we're not in the same space or time, we mm. are still connected energetically with everybody else. So if I send out that intention and that energy but that, that, that vibration to another it will ha have an impact on them whether or not they choose to engage with that may be another matter mm -hmm. mm, it's like prayer it's very powerful yeah it is what, what we're being given as well is because the vibrations are, are rising higher and lighter and finer is that where they used to be just a sort of sense of an essence within within objects we're now getting divine beings incarnating into places to experience life on earth in their own unique way. So, you know, buildings are becoming more than divine beings. We we all know as well that there are divine beings within the trees, but there are there's so many things and it's starting to be. You could probably have a look around your room and there would be an aspect of a divine being in every part of your home everything that you own and it's so fascinating because we will gradually uh, certainly for empaths and sensitives it's like turn your dimmer switch down a little bit sense oh turn your dimmer switch back up again <laughs> and it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful it's making life fascinating just like you said robin everything's energy even the mm. solid matter yes it's just a slower vibration isn't it absolutely and i, I love that like you were saying trees but being surrounded by nature here 
just having that vibration and even the inanimate things so rocks have a vibration mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we have a spring here so we've got water with its own vibration and mm -hmm. the, all the wildlife obviously as well so mm -hmm. yeah i just i just love tuning into that and okay what what is your experience kind of what does it feel like to be a tree what does it feel like to be a bird and and all of those things that that we can do when we're sensitive and, and just get us in such of. an amazing location because you are immersed <laughs> in that it's it's so so powerful it's incredible so we, we do respect what you're doing there robin and mm. we can feel it just oozes out of not just you but the whole of your area mm. and when you're able to do your retreats again for people to come in and just it is an immersion in those senses it's going to be absolutely profound and everybody who comes here no matter how sensitive they are they all comment on the feel of this place and as soon mm. as you leave the main road we're a mile and a half up a, a lane even just traveling up that lane i've got a piece on my website that somebody who visited wrote about just it's a, it really is a feeling of magic there is no other word really in the language as yet that conveys that sense it's just a sense of deep peace it's a sense of wow or wonder gratitude beauty all of those things all put together in a sense of wow i can be just be in this space because and that's why i love it so much in terms of retreats and workshops and things because there aren't all the out you know your everyday expectations demands mm -hmm. that the kind of mold that you've already been placed in you can just step out of all of that when you come here mm -hmm. but I'd like to know a little bit more if you would be happy to share of how you now have learned to use those gifts that used to be labeled as being oversensitive <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in your work now. How is you know, have you bit. been <laughs> able to turn that around and use it? You've, you've touched on little bits about working in people's homes and working in offices, but if you would just give us a little bit more insight on that, changing what was labeled as you know something you wouldn't want into this gift mm -hmm. yeah may i start helen yeah, yeah. thank you, you um <laughs> so so yes yeah, so once i re once i realized that um that actually having this sensitivity is actually a gift from within shining out and i'd got that protection so i didn't have to soak up everything um i went i started and i might just share something very quickly with you because it was very profound it was my sort of awakening to what i'd been doing so i'd, I'd had about a year or uh, six months to a year of working with these very experienced ladies and we used to meet every friday night and then one friday february 1996 i had an experience where i was starting to get really uncomfortable all my senses were going on overdrive and um and and in the end, we we all tuned in to see what was going on because I, you know I was absolutely beside myself, and I was like something is really wrong, you know. <laughs> and they're like, all right, Claire, all right, let, let's just have a tune in. So um, we tuned in to see what was going on, and it was a really shocking experience because we saw and and sensed um, that we saw uh, like a train crash or an explosion. There'd been some sort of little fire. Um, People have been killed or people injured. They got the, um, the emergency services there. And we're like, oh, my goodness, there's a pregnant lady there. And the little soul couldn't decide whether to stay or to go. It was traumatized. So we just sent love in a very soft, soft energy. Very, very muted color. Nothing too bright. Nothing very, very soothing. And we held that energy. We communicated with the little soul that said, Actually, I think I would like to stay. And uh, and we worked on it until the whole of the energy eased and felt OK. And we felt that like we'd finished. And we were like, OK, that was weird. I went home and I don't normally watch the news, but I was like, what on earth has been going on? The IRA, the Irish Republican Army of Ireland, had bombed the Docklands and they'd blown up the monorail 
And that was one of the things we couldn't understand why we only saw one rail up in the air. Well, that doesn't make sense. There's, maybe it's exploded and the rail's up in the air. You know, so everything that we'd seen was what they were reporting. And there was a pregnant woman who'd been rushed to hospital. They weren't sure if they were, she was going to lose the baby. And I was like, no, she won't. And it was the following afternoon that they said, no, she's not going to lose the baby. And uh, and I sat there and thought, OK, that's 200 miles away from where I was sitting. And it was like an alarm system in my body. And I thought, I've got to accept I'm here to help change energies. And it was that throwing of a switch with my beliefs that I then became that person. When we went to do energy clearing, if it was absolutely dire, I was the one that they pushed in the room. They were like, we're not going in there, Claire. In you go. <laughs> uh, but I had that, again, that throwing of that switch from that experience. I knew that when I linked with my team, so we're not, Helen and I aren't just doing this on our own. We have this incredible divine team that we can stand in a room. We shine. It's like we go on to overdrive on our, our vibration it ripples out and like you said earlier robin our vibration and our light changes the resonance in the whole vicinity mm. and it will it will blast there nothing in that room can exist except that divine love and then we add we add other things that we do like the resonance of sound ball the music salt things um and helen's sage. very very gifted but helen goes around the sage and and adds her beautiful innate gifts with that as well. And then we just check. We say we are using our senses. So you empaths, use your sense. We're going around yet. Yeah. Oh, what's in that cupboard there? <laughs> I think also we we have no fear, you know, about any entities. We've cleared buildings that have had them. We don't mm. obviously we don't say we're ghostbusters or anything, but there have sometimes we have had um yeah interesting activity. But we don't have any fear because remember negativity feeds on the fear yeah. and i think because we practice this so much we've got stronger and stronger with our lights and this is what we encourage others to do as well mm. to be strong in who you are you have or we all have help we all have our guides and our angels and our masters and if we call them in and ask that will be even stronger yeah you're not here on your own <laughs> Alone, yes, yeah. and that, that is a very important message. And I love, Helen, that you use um, homeopathy and, and those natural, so again, drawing on nature, drawing on the um, energies of nature, which homeopathy is doing, isn't it? It's taking the energy signature of that plant, of that remedy. And I love that, you know, many of us are turning back to those more natural ways tuning in with nature working alongside with nature using those natural vibrations for our own well-being and then by extension the well-being of the whole planet and it's been there for thousands of years hasn't it now it has it everything that yeah. we need yes um, somehow science along the way started to take over and you know i went down the conventional route with my own chronic ill health 30 years ago <laughs> and it wasn't helping me I was getting worse and um, I didn't believe in homeopathy or anything alternative at the time even though I was sensitive um, and but then I discovered it and it was amazing and I got better and I got well and then I was angry that nobody had ever told me about this before <laughs> then I decided to study and train in it and it was a great it's been a great path you've helped a lot of people with that Helen I, I have so much admiration for Helen. I just I see clients go to her who are in whatever chronic state, and then she will just spend that time with them to go to the root cause, not all the out out symptoms are just giving the message of what's going on within energetically beliefs what they brought with them on the planet. And she's added not just her own homeopathy, but her theta healing and other gifts and qualities. And they come out and they're having a beautiful life. They're happy. They're healthy. They're in balance. And I just see that. And it's just, it's just beautiful. It's very moving. So, and, I, and she's very understated. I'm very loud, as you can tell. <laughs> Helen's very <laughs> understated, but she's an incredible lady. And, and I just, you know, the amount of times where I've, I've met people and I thought, yeah, you need, 
you could really do with a session with Helen for homeopathy or, or whatever that is a match. And that, again, we we never own people. We are so if we meet people, we feel that they're a resonant match to you, Robin. We would be saying, check that out, use your inner guidance, and see if that's a match for you. You make that decision, find out which is a match. But at least you offer out. We network. We share. We're all in this together. Mm. It makes such a difference. So yeah. Thank you. Philip. Yes, I think that that I always say connection and homeopathy. community <laughs> is so important. Sorry. Yeah. I always say it's not me. It's homeopathy. That that's another way of changing your vibration. Yeah. Okay, it is. I guess who's, yeah. We help to do that too. Yeah. Yeah. And and we do we do ask people to take ownership for their own. You know, we're not just coming in with the magic wand going, Ta -da, there you go, it's going to stay clear forever, like we've washed your car and it's never going to get dirty again. You know, we, we, we give them the tools to say, and this is how you can keep your business and your home clear. This is how you can keep yourself clear so that they can do that, you know, that nice, simple energy clearing for themselves. That's part of their good practice in the same way that you would clean your teeth. <laughs> you would wash your hair <laughs> it's again like you said earlier robin it's about reminding people of who they are yeah. and their own innate power their loving power yeah and like you say giving or reminding them of the tools that they already have because it's not about you know you go to somebody and they cure you heal you make you better turn your life around for me it's more about I've got a mirror and I've got a light and here's what you you can see in what I can see in you and what I hope you can then come to see in yourself and start to embody and own and celebrate and all of oh, those wonderful that, things. Celebrate. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Celebrate being you, truly you. Yeah. 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 I love that. Because it is it's really special, Robin, isn't it? That, um, mm -hmm. You know, we know, and anyone who's who's working with clients, they've got it all within them. They are that shining that, but somewhere along the line, they've lost their self-belief. They've lost their self-worth. Yeah. And they're so busy trying to get it. What am I supposed to be doing? What have I got to learn? What, are, what have I got to get gain from that person? What have I got to read? Um, and it's almost frenzied, and we're just like, you have it within you. you you know, by all means, if you feel drawn to take a course or you feel drawn to do this, but actually that's just showing you your your wisdom, your higher wisdom that's oozing out of all of your pores, shining out of your eyes and your soul. It's there already. And like you said, right at the beginning, it's recognising that that's within us already. We are Reminding. all, we always say we're like snowflakes. We're all individuals yeah. with special gifts for the world. Yeah. What are your unique that. gifts and qualities that you have yeah. come with? Because they're going to be right for you and they're going to be right for now. Yes. Yeah. And it That's evolved. why we're here. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Everything's evolving. Because <laughs> I think we can all say we are not the same people that we were. 10, 20, 30 years ago, whatever age you might be, we all evolve in some capacity, even if we think we don't. When you look back, you go, yeah, actually, yeah. And we're evolving on all levels, aren't we? So mind, body and soul. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Wow. But many times people are empty vessels because they're giving, and I've been there and done that in the past, <laughs> yeah. um, giving too much, <laughs> helping others and not actually looking after themselves. So we always put big emphasis on that, that you must put your own oxygen mask on. Mm. We always say before you help others. Absolutely. Self-care being so important and such a gift to everybody around you, not just yeah. to yourself. Because if you give permission to yourself to do that, not only are you a full cup, not an empty one, you're also saying to everybody else, this is the thing to do. I'm giving myself permission. I give you permission. Yeah. Yeah. And it's being that example in your own life because, you know, I mean, you touched on that earlier, actually. It's it's about, it is about your vibration. It's about your light. It's shining that out as a reminder that they are that also. 
So it's yes. less about, so you describe with your, all your mentoring and your coaching that you do, you become the mirror. You're just lovingly reflecting back the signs, the indications, so they can recognize it for themselves, which is beautiful. And I'm sure, again, and all the ladies and gentlemen who are part of your groups, if they're working with clients in whatever capacity, they are reminding their wonderful clients how amazing they already are. And it's about allowing yourself to be that. And then when that role as well, we're not here to just fix and sort. We're just here. We're holding the space. We're holding the light. We're being the light so that they can become the full light as well. It's amazing. It is so enjoyable as well enjoyable and enjoyable <laughs> indeed yes and i think that's a perfect note on which to thank you both again so very much for coming on sharing what you do and giving those words of hope for people who have maybe been labeled as oversensitive but actually the truth of no you're just a wonderful light being who happens to be very sensitive but it's a gift and you can choose how to use it and you can choose what to feel and when That's in lovely. terms of your sensitivity thank you too, Robin. we, yeah, thank we you, really Robin. appreciate what you are doing for everybody and being for everybody mm. and you are just a shining light you really are yeah we so, love your light yeah oh it's lovely thank to you. see you today Thank you both. And thank you, everyone who has watched us live or who joins us for the replay. It's been great to have you and all the comments that we've had as well today. And I will be back again very soon with some more wonderful guests. Just watch out in the group. I will be posting more later. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Bye for now. Bye.